Welcome to another episode of Mental Health and Makeup Monday. If you have been here before, welcome back. And if you haven't and you're new, hi, so glad you're here. My name is Keisha Martine and I'm a licensed therapist and here is where I try to help you laugh through the crap that holds you back. <laughs> All right. Today I'm going to be talking about self-talk. If you're watching this, you might be struggling with it. And so if I can help in any way, that's what I hope to do. Okay. I'm going to try to make some magic happen while I talk to you. Please don't judge too much if you're new, not a makeup artist. Okay. Right then. Moving on. What happens when we are mean to ourselves? If we're not careful and we're not aware of how we're talking to ourselves, that can really interfere with a lot of things. Okay. So are you checking in with yourself or are you just kind of absentmindedly going through the motions of your day? And then before you know it, you're feeling pretty crappy and you don't know why. Well, it could be because of how you're talking to yourself. Sometimes we don't catch when we're shaming ourselves or when we're beating ourselves up or we're not being very nice to ourselves. Now, I'm not gonna be one of those people that says, oh, just think positive and everything will be okay. Okay, that's BS, no, all right? Because that positivity can get us really stuck in a trap and in a loop and if we find ourselves not being the best and being perfect and all the things, then we're not measuring up to that narrative we're telling ourselves and then guess what? We end up feeling even more crappy about ourselves than we started with. And sometimes being positive is being in denial about things that you might need to change or be aware of or mindful of, okay? So instead of positive self-talk, what I'm gonna encourage you to think about is compassionate self-talk, all right? Compassion doesn't dismiss and ignore things that you might need to correct because we need to hold ourselves accountable for our BS, all right? So when you think about compassion, think about how you offer grace to other people when they've made mistakes or when they're not being their best selves, all right? What does that look like? So if someone screws up, are you like, oh my God, I can't believe that, I hate you so much. Eh. I would certainly hope not. Hopefully you will offer some gentle correction and say, hey, you know, look, I, like, I love you, bro, but that's not cool. We gotta work on this. Okay, and that's kind of how we have to talk to ourselves about things, you know, but sometimes we just don't do that. So what are you saying to yourself? Hmm? When's the last time you said something nice to yourself? Think about it, how long has it been? So when's the last time you said, hey, you did a kick-ass job yesterday. I know it might sound silly, but we don't do it. We do it for other people, but we don't do it for ourselves. Why aren't we doing that? I'm just saying. If we're not paying attention to this, we run the risk of letting our inner critic take over and drive the wheel and make us crazy. Okay. And that inner critic, in case you hadn't watched that other video, is basically a mean girl or mean douchebag that you went to high school with that's a big bully, okay? And we don't want them in charge because they're little assholes. So we gotta figure out how we have to talk to that little asshole in our head to make them calm the F down, okay? So what is that little asshole telling you? That you're not good enough? That you don't fit? That there's something wrong with you? That you don't do enough? Or that you have to completely neglect yourself for other people because you don't matter? What's it telling you? Identify it. And once you have it identified, then that's where you can start being compassionate and realistic with yourself. What is it that you're really saying? And what is it that you're really needing in that moment? Are you needing reassurance? Are you needing to validate your frustrations or accept the fact that you made a mistake? What is it that you're needing to really need to hear in those moments to correct whatever it is you need to correct in a compassionate way? And you may not even need to be correct in anything. It could just be that little asshole beating up on you for no reason. They do that sometimes. Hey. So why is it important that you learn how to talk nicely to yourself or be kinder to yourself? Well, if we don't, you leave yourself vulnerable to people that would harm you because you're essentially fueling those insecurities with that self-talk. And so highly difficult people, toxic people, narcissistic people, histrionic people. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, all right? People that you don't need in your space are gonna see that as a vulnerability in you. You know, because if you're over here bullying yourself and somebody comes along and starts bullying you, you're gonna be like, well, that's that's all right. I do it anyway, it's, I'm a piece of shit, so I should just let them talk to me that way too, okay? Don't do that, all right? You're smarter than that. So loving yourself and being compassionate with yourself is going to help you be more secure in who you are. And it's also going to help you draw that line and that boundary when someone is talking to you the way they shouldn't be talking to you. All right, so let's say that you have identified who that little asshole is in your head. What do you really need to say to that little asshole? What do you want to say? What do they always say about bullies? It's usually happening at home, right? So what does that bully really need? You can bully it back, fuel the situation and make it worse, or giving that bully what it really truly needs, which is love, understanding, compassion, patience, all things. Even though you want to wring its little neck, okay? 
Now that you've asked what that little asshole needs, the next step that I'm gonna encourage you to do is to find evidence to confront that little asshole with. <laughs> I hope I don't get, you know, a strike or something on YouTube for all the, the, the cuss words. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, so let's say you have a thought that you're a bad mom. I have that thought a lot. I don't know any mom that doesn't. We're constantly living in guilt. If you know what I'm talking about, comment down below. Anyway, what is the evidence to that? Okay, and again, we all make mistakes, we can all make better choices, and we can all work on ourselves to improve. But really, what qualifies as a bad parent? In my experience, a person that questions whether or not they're doing a good job or if they're a good parent, typically they're pretty awesome, right? Because a bad parent doesn't typically stop to think if they're doing the right thing. Not all the time, but that's something to think about. We can't know all the things, okay? So just be nice to yourself. So if a friend comes and says, oh man, I feel like such a shitty mom because of blah, 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 blah. I got an argument with my kid and this is how it went down. Would you say, yeah, right, yeah, you know what? You are, you're a crappy mom. I mean, well, um, if they are, that's one thing, but I, let's just pretend for a second that they are not a bad mom. What are you gonna say? Are you gonna say, yeah, that's true. Absolutely, 100%, I think you're a crappy mom. You just need to, you know, cut your losses, give up because you're just, you know, not any good. No, of course not you probably go down the list, right? What is the evidence that you see in your friend that she's a good mom? Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to do that for ourselves. You know, this applies across the board. So if let's say that you fail a test. Oh my God, that makes me a terrible, terrible student. I'm a failure at life. Why did I even try? What's wrong with me? <laughs> Same is true in that scenario. What's the evidence that says that you are a bad student based on one test? And so sometimes our voices are like trying to nudge us and to help us grow and, and change. For instance, with the student example, all right, maybe there is some truth that you need to study more or you need to put forth some more effort. The same with the mom example. Maybe it's true that you need to be more patient with your kid, but it doesn't make you a bad mom and it doesn't make you a bad student if you still have things you have to work on. All right. So it's this all or nothing thinking that we can really get sucked into this black and white thinking that really just ends up coloring our perception of everything and it's not grounded in reality. Possibly. No, it doesn't make you crazy to talk to yourself, okay? We just don't realize we're doing it. And it's more crazy not to listen to what you're telling yourself. Because if you don't listen to what you're telling yourself, then you can't correct it and you can't start to feel better and be better, all right? Just saying. I mean, think about it. That's the reason why people have problems is because they're completely unaware of what they're actually feeling, thinking, what they're telling themselves, what messages they were told growing up. They just, they just block it out. They just pretend like it's not there or they ignore it or they dismiss it or all the things, okay? So you're not crazy if you're listening to what you're telling yourself and trying to correct it. Well, I hoping this has been helpful so far. And if it has, let me know. Hit that like button. And if it hasn't been helpful and you think it's complete crap, let me know also. I don't mind. Another thing you can do is try to identify the origin of that voice. So maybe it was a toxic partner or a toxic friend who always made you feel like you weren't doing enough or that it wasn't good enough or that you constantly did something wrong. Yeah. That could be a thing. That's pretty crappy. Maybe it was a teacher. A teacher that made you feel like you just weren't good enough, not smart enough, or not hardworking enough. So whose voice is it really? And let's correct it with the true voice. You know, be love. You have to be love, basically. That's why I say be well, be strong, be love. Because if you're love, then, you know, love wins. And I don't mean in the sense of like, oh, fairy tales and all the things. Love wins with us internally and it can keep us safe if we're tapping into that and we're making sure that we're doing that and we're putting love in and then giving love out. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. Oh, that song feels good, doesn't it? All you need is love. All you need is love. Love. Love is all you need. So the one thing I'm hoping that you will take away from this video today, if you made it this far, is that your self-talk matters. And we don't wanna just be hyper positive and la la land and rainbows and butterflies and all the things, okay? It's just not realistic. We need to hold ourselves accountable for our BS and work on ourselves to improve things, 
okay? But we also want to be compassionate. We want to have a balanced self-talk com with compassion. All right, so be nice to yourself. Here's something that you can do. You can write a love letter to yourself. I know it might sound silly, but give it a try, you know? And then you'll have that letter to look back at when you feel like your inner critic, bully, asshole person in your head is beating up on you. You can go back and read that letter and be like, oh, that's right, I'm fabulous, I forgot. <laughs> How silly of me. I didn't need to listen to that person. Okay, just thought. And I know there's people out there because I'm also one of those people that you're like, you don't want to be full of yourself, but you know, you don't have to squash your light to make other people feel comfortable. Okay, there's a difference between being grandiose and the and being love and sharing love and light. There's a total difference there, okay? So don't feel like you have to squash your light because you don't want to be perceived as someone that just wants attention because that shit is not coming from you, <laughs> okay? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, all right? That kind of stuff, that kind of nonsense, that, that little asshole in my head is what kept me for so long doing things that I really want to do and enjoy doing and love doing, like these videos, for instance, okay? So just be you. And be okay with being you. And if you need help with that, you know what I'm gonna say. All right then, I'm gonna finish off camera. Don't get anywhere. Stay put. All right, so here we are, final look. Like it, love it, hate it, let me know. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else. All right, and until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.